price presentation, in my opinion, is one of the most important pieces of what you're trying to do. That doesn't mean that you can that you can skimp on any other parts of the presentation. You know, you still have to have a strong agenda set. You still have to have a great survey. You still have to do all of those things. You still have to get tie downs along the way, help the customer move down the right path. You know, you still have to do all of those things. If you do all of those things right and you screw up price presentation, you're probably going to lose more than you're going to win. You know, because it's hard to make the money make sense. It's hard to make the money make sense to people who were expecting something to cost a whole lot less. You know, nowadays, if you wanted to, you could go and you could buy yourself a, a 60 inch TV, LCD, 4K, smart TV with all this stuff built into it. You know, so something about, you know, that big, boom, you can go buy that for like 700 bucks. You try and do a window the same size, that window's like two grand. And people just don't think of that. You know, they just don't, they don't think that a, a window is going to cost more than this fancy piece of electronics that has all these bells and whistles and bullet points on it. They just don't think that. You're telling me that that window is going to cost two grand, but, you know, they don't, maybe they don't point out the TV, but they could, you know, but my TV costs 700 bucks and that's 4K, blah, 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 60 inch, right? They don't get that. And then they also see on TV and in newspaper ads or whenever they're walking around to Home Depot and Lowe's on a Saturday or a Sunday, they also see windows there and the window says like 484 or something like that on it, right? They don't know about all of the other stuff that comes along with that. Well, that, that doesn't have a screen on it. Oh, that doesn't have hardware on it. Oh, well, we got to install it. I mean, you know, so that turns into even that $500 window still for them turns into $1,600, you know, going to, but they just don't know that. And so their price conditioned the wrong direction, you know, all the time, no matter how hard we're doing. Uh, no matter how hard we're working with them. And so since that's the case, that's why we do price conditioning, right? Throughout the appointment, your price conditioning, either soft or hard at a variety of time, time points or whatever they call points during the sale or during the visit, because you need to get them understanding like, guys, this isn't going to cost what you thought it was going to cost. It's going to cost a whole lot more than you thought it was going to cost. Sometimes you even say that to them, right? You get, in, get them into the right place. And sometimes you might even say that to them. If you do everything right, even price conditioning, and you screw up price presentation, you're gonna lose more than you win. So you'll lose more than you win if you screw up on price presentation, no matter how good you did on all of the other pieces of what you're doing, all right? That, again, doesn't negate the importance and the value of all of the other steps and all the other commitments and tie downs and all that stuff that you have to do. It doesn't negate that value, but if you don't do that one right, you negate all of their value. You see what I'm saying? And doing it right isn't just finding a way that makes it make sense for the customer. You know, you can sit there and, and have a wide open book of financing. Let's just say you can have 50 different plans, something for anyone and just say, hey, well, which one of these works for you? And maybe they actually find something that works or whatever, right? But again, if that's all you do, if you don't have a specific strategy, you're going to lose more than you will win. And so you have to be very strategic in how you do it. And so what we did is we selected, and we did this years ago. We, you know, we did this years ago because it just makes business sense. We selected financing plans that make sense from a cost to dealer standpoint and are still very presentable to a customer in the home. The 6.99 plans that you guys are familiar with, the 12 months same as cash, and then obviously cash which is in the finance plan. Um, those things can make sense financially because of what their cost to the dealer is and what we have our margins set at. Going outside of that could be difficult, but more than that, the real reason that I like these plans is if you, if you walk a customer through the pricing and through the payments and through the deposit, if you walk a customer through it properly, you can help them find a program that makes sense and you can kind of paint them into a corner where they have to say, yes, this makes sense. You've satisfied all of my concerns by using a specific strategy to walk them down that path. And so those plans allow us to do that and used in consort with the way that we do deposits, which I'm going to show you guys. The point of me talking about this right now is I really want you to get good at this. You've got to get very, very good at presenting price, at making the money make sense. That's what you're really trying to do is make the money make sense. You got to get very good at it. 
That doesn't mean that you need to become a financial advisor. So you're not going to sit there and do financial advising with them. But you can make it make sense that instead of doing a $12,000, 12 months, same as cash for a partial for a half of the house, that comes out to around a thousand bucks a month. If you were to set aside the money for it every month, instead of that thousand bucks a month, why don't we get the whole house done for $489 a month and you guys can pay it off as fast as you want. You so, so we can make stuff like that make sense if we have a good strategy and how we're presenting price. So having said all of that, the plans that we use, the plans that we use are, and I think you all know this, 6.99%, there's three of those. I'm kind of writing small for a video now that I'm thinking about it. This one's at five year, this one's seven year, this one's 10 year, and then we also have the 12, 12 months same as cash, and for February and March at least, we're also running a 24 month, same as cash, and then of course, there's always cash, all right? The payment factors on each of these are different, but the thing is, is if you're using a deposit, which is the way that the sheet is drawn, if you use a deposit in consort with these here, you can really help a customer go to the right place. So what I mean is, without a deposit, whenever you use the 6.99 for five, for no deposit, you're gonna have a super high payment. Let's just say that you know the job was $20,000. And I don't know the payment factors. I'm not gonna make that make sense. I'm just gonna use this as a tool to kind of demonstrate you know, the proof of concept. So what I mean by all of that is, Let's just say that the payment on the 6.99 for five with zero down, you know, with zero down, let's just say that it was 500 bucks a month. With zero down, it was 500 bucks a month, okay? This payment here would be, I don't know, let's just call it, it'd be 380, something like that. We can get the real numbers, but whatever is whatever on that. This payment here is gonna be more like 300, let's just say. Okay, something around there. This one's gonna be closer to this one. There's gonna be a pretty size, there's gonna be a decent gap between those. Probably not that big, but there's gonna be a gap between those. All right, that's with zero down. However, if you can get them to look at, if you can show them a third down, right? These numbers are, are gonna drop dramatically. So this one comes down to like, let's just say it comes down to about 300 bucks is what it comes down to if you, no comma, if you put down a third, then this one comes down to, let's just say 200, and this one comes down to 175, all right? So what ends up happening is you show the customer this one whenever you first get into price presentation with nothing down. You show them that one, you have a brief conversation with them, you let that price kind of soak in that they're seeing this $500 a month payment. Then once you're, you know, you give them the whole speech about, we promise we give you a price that's good for a year, you know, you give them that whole speech while that number is sitting there. And then without asking for permission, you go and you assume a deposit, assume a third. Okay, assume a third deposit. So you're going to step out of the, the price presentation tool that you're in, go over and put in a deposit and then go back into it. All right. So once you do that, that payment's going to be sitting down here around this 300 number. So it's gonna come down pretty dramatically. You've assumed a deposit, so now they have a deposit of a third down. So in this case, you know, and we're dealing with discounts and all that other stuff, but uh, they've put down this deposit and you're gonna to say to them, let's just call it, say, we'll call it 5,000 because of some discounts and stuff. There we've got some discounts applied. You're gonna ask them, so you're gonna start asking some questions. So guys, uh, with your third down, the payment, monthly payment is going to come to around 300 bucks a month. So I want to ask you a couple of questions about the numbers that are on this page. First, how do you feel about the 300, whatever that payment is? How do you feel about that payment? And you're asking them how they feel about it, okay? Not what do they think of it. You're not even asking them if it fits in the budget, right. all right? Get, get fits in the budget out of, your, out of your vernacular. It's not something that you need. Come on in, Chad. Get fits in the budget out of your vocabulary, all right? This isn't about what fits in the budget. 
America, everybody is over budget, right? Everybody's in debt. The whole country is in debt. Everybody's in debt. Well, look, to government, beyond everybody, our right? It's not about what fits into the budget. It's about what you can help them make make sense, and it's about what they feel too. So in this case, you know, how do you feel about the three hundred bucks? Well, you know, we 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 could make it happen. You could make 300 happen. Yeah, you know, we could make it happen. If you sense that little tension in their voice where they're like that, don't just move on, take a break real quick. And okay, you know, I, I'm hearing a little bit of hesitation in your voice. You could make it happen. I mean, obviously, you're probably like me in that you'd like to see that payment come down a little bit just so you have more money and more flexibility. Yeah, I'd like to see the payment come down. Okay, so we're at 300 right now. Where would you like to see it? Around like 250, somewhere around there? Where are we talking about? Yeah, 250 would feel better. Okay, so you're just trying to get them to give you some sort of commitment on that payment, and you can take it down a little bit from there if you've got the third down and if you're still on the 6.99 for five. You can kind of do that with them. Okay, so now let me ask you about the deposit, about the down payment. How do you feel about that down payment? Now, give them support right there. How do you feel about that down payment? I mean, do you have a credit card that you like to get points on? You know, because we could take a credit card for that. You know, how do you feel about it? Just give them some suggestion. I like to use the credit card suggestion in points. And they'll say, oh, you know, well, that's, that's a little bit more than I wanted to put down. A little bit more than we'd be able to. Or whatever, whatever resistance they give you. It doesn't matter. Because you're willing to help them take it down a little bit. Because you're there to help them. You're there to support them and all that stuff. And so at that point, it's like, okay, so, you know, right now we're talking about putting 5000 down. You know, what would you want to put down if they gave you some hesitation, right? What would you want to put down? And it's want to put down. That way they're starting to make a, they're starting to make buying signs, you know, they're starting to make buying decisions. It's not what do you think you could put down? What could you afford to put down? It's not that. Because now you've got them in the wrong section of their brain. Now they're in this logical side and they're sitting there thinking about all of their bills at the end of the month or beginning, whatever it is, where they have to sit down and write them all out. You don't want them in that place. You don't want them in, in the brain. It's, it's wants. People like to get stuff. So what would you want to put down? Just real easy, you know? You know, it's a beautiful day outside. What would you want to put down? Just as easy, you know, you say it real easy. And so then they're just like, ah, you know, I mean, I don't know, they'll say one or two things. Either they'll hem and they'll haw a little bit and then they'll, you'll work them through getting a number out of them. Or they'll, um, they'll say, well, I'd rather put nothing down. <laughs> you know, I'd rather put down. Well, and then it's like, you know, I understand that, and that's definitely an option if we end up there. Uh, you know, but w what would you want to put down? You know what I mean? Like, get, try and get a number. Don't be so quick to accept whatever they say. Whatever they say, it doesn't matter. It all works out in your favor. If, they, if you go from 5,000 in this particular example, and, and you get them to, and they say, well, you know, we'll do 1,000, and they, they give it to you like you're believing it. You know, we'll give it 1,000. Okay, cool. All right, so 1,000 down, you feel good with that? Yeah. You're going to go up into the price calculator, and you're going to change it to 1,000 down. But you're going to remind them before you do that the challenge that they've placed on you is pretty difficult. They want to see the payment come down and they want to see the deposit come down. So you got to bring them back to earth a little bit. you got to make sure they know, okay, guys, so just want to make sure I'm hearing you right. You want the payment to come down and the down payment to come down. Obviously, that's going to be fairly challenging, you know, because you put down less payment goes up. If we were to stick with this plan... We have some other plans, so I'll take a look and see what we can make work, but I really feel like there's something that we can make work for you. Yeah, okay, great. If we could, maybe you go for an extra tie down right there. If we could find a way to make the money work, to bring the payment down, to bring down the down payment, um, there wouldn't be anything else holding us up from doing business, would there? You know, whatever, maybe you throw an extra little one right there, get a little aggressive. Maybe you don't. Depends on where they're at, you know? But the thing is, is even if they, if you got this commitment that instead of like, let's say that 300, that they were willing to do 250. You got that commitment. If you take this down payment all the way back down to zero and then drop through the seven year and the 10 year, this 10 year, even with zero down, will always be a lower payment than what you agree to with them up here at the five year with a third down. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's just the way that the math works of these plans. And so as long as you're getting commitments from them, tying it down, getting them to buy in at the five year on a payment with a third down, knowing that they're going to want to put down less, knowing that they're going to want to put down less, but you know 
that even if they put down zero and they only go down in this payment about 10 to 15 percent, that you can still hit them at the 10 year and have zero down and satisfy their need to lower the payment and lower the down payment. Do you run any risk of them committing to a payment? Like you said what payment would work? What if they should have a super low? No, I didn't say what payment would work. I didn't say that. Don't put words in my mouth. I have this recorded. And so I'll be able to prove to you I didn't say that. I didn't say that. We were talking about the deposit. So we were talking about the deposit. Oh, okay, so you're talking about the payment part. Okay, so whenever we're talking about the payment, you again have to be very suggestive. You heard me just say about 10 to 15%. So you can take off safely with the third down. You can take 10 to 15% off in your head here and know that you're going to be okay here. Real easily, maybe even more, but I feel it's easy math to do 10%, so 300 bucks. You know, if it's 10%, I'm taking off 30, maybe I'll take off 45 and know that if I can set an expectation with them to be around here, that I'll be okay. And so I maybe blew past that, but basically at that point right there, it's like, okay, you know, I'm hearing that, you know, maybe you want to see the payment come down. That's natural. You know, where would you want to be? You know, right now you're at 300, you want to be, you know, 250, 275, you know, where, where do you want to be? Do you see what I mean? So, so good question. So you want to do that, but you have to plant a suggestion in there. You can't just say, you know, what do you want the payment to be? Because if you do, then they say, oh, 100 bucks or whatever, you have, you're only stuck with phasing now, you know, so keep them, keep them there. So I'll, um, let me get back on track. Okay, so that's kind of the strategy because see, if you're going there to serve the customer and, and you will find yourself selling a lot more deals if you really get in somebody's face and serve them. You know, really serve them. Don't shortcut them. You know, you walk in the house and the, the wife is running around with the kid that's screaming her head off and being all stupid and, you know, not letting the parents, not letting the parents, you know, partake in the appointment or whatever. Don't just shortcut it and get out of, get out of the house because now I've got a one party or truly serve them, you know? I know one of the reps that I used to work with in another office used to carry coloring books and crayons with them. And he would sometimes just take it out at the table and he would just start coloring if the kids were acting kind of crazy at the table or whatever. And then he would offer it to them. And then the kids are sitting there coloring and he's talking to mom and dad. He really served them. You know, I'm not saying you got to go do coloring books, but he was serving them. I used to keep some games on my iPad where I could sit there and I could talk and play it with the kid while I was talking to the parents, you know, whatever, right? There's a lot of things you can do. But here you're serving them too in price presentation by helping them find, find that way. And if you get those commitments out of them, by the time you get here, by the time you get there, then there's nowhere they can go. You have served them by satisfying their needs to design a project that makes sense for them to improve their condition, right? You're improving their condition. You proved that you're a trustworthy person who works for a company that's gonna go out and deliver on their promises. You proved that to them throughout the way that you've been treating them. You showed them why working with the products that we offer is something that makes sense for them and that they need to do. And then you found a way to make the money work for them. They're going to resist. But if we do this, you take them to such a place where it's like it doesn't make sense to do anything other than get started with you. And then you're in the close. <laughs> because now you have to close and get them to do it. You made everything make sense, including the money. Now you got to close. Right. If you do this wrong, you didn't make everything make sense and you don't have the right to close. If you didn't find a way that really made the money make sense for them, you don't have the right to close. That's where salespeople sometimes get a bad reputation. They close when they don't have the right. Mm -hmm. So from beginning to end, you earn the right to close. Once you've done all of those things, now you close. And then you can say things like, you know, Chad, I, I owe you an apology. You know, throughout, you know, our entire appointment today, I, I thought I was answering all of the questions and getting everything figured out, but I obviously have missed something, so I apologize. You know, everything today has made it feel like we were headed towards working together on this project. Help me understand um, why we're not coming together right now. This is maybe your last ditch effort, you know, at the very end of your close. You know, how we understand that. We're not going to role play it, but you can say stuff like, you can say stuff like that if you truly have served them. And then you can go a little bit further into it. If you haven't, and you're just sitting there, guys, you're going to lose this 
you're going to lose this 10%, you know, you'll never get the sale, they'll cancel if they get it anyways, you know, if you get it, you're going to lose the sale anyways. So what I want to do is, um, we'll stop this video, um, I'll probably just record my iPad and, um, and I'm going to throw it up on the screen and we'll do a brief uh, price presentation with the tool that we have in here, cool. um, role play. Awesome.